Hi everybody, I'm Jim Shore. Right now we're at my uh, lake house here in South Carolina. Some time ago I promised that uh, I would start doing a few painting projects with you all. Uh, and I got a very good response, so presumably a lot of you uh, would uh, like to have a chance to you know, sit down and do some simple paintings that are very effective and I want to show you a couple that I have in mind uh, for the future. We'll do this sort of thing. Now this is very quick, very easy, and very cheap. This is actually done on a piece of cardboard with uh, slats. We'll do the whole works, including the frame, and you'll have this sort of an antique folk art painting. Here's another one that's similar. And this is just scraps, scraps, simple paint. And in just a little while, you can have something like that if you like that style. Now, today, I want to do a version of this painting here. This is more of a, a little bit more modern and a little bit more of a decor piece. I painted this in about 45 minutes. So it's, as you can see, it's very simple. And I, I'll show you the technique uh, that I, that I uh, went about I used to go about doing that. And I'll show you right now what, uh, what you, you need to have. Now, I'm not in the place where I normally do my painting, which is all set up with easels and lighting and all that kind of stuff. Mainly because I wanted to show you that you can paint anywhere, anytime. See, I've got my professional easel right here. It also doubles as a chair. I've got my professional palette, better known by the untrained as a paper plate, and then uh, just a few simple paints. Now, you know, these are artist colors, and I don't go by brand. A lot of people do. They say one brand's better than the other. Uh, that might be, but for something like this, it doesn't matter. You can actually use house paint doing like this. However, you have to keep in mind that if you use oil paint, oil paint can be painted over um, you know, acrylic, but not the other way around. You never put acrylic over oil, it doesn't stick. So if you, if you have an underpainting of acrylic, you can paint oil on top of it. The opposite is not true, and that includes spray paints. Okay, so now what I've got here is I've got just some, this is burnt umber, but any kind of brown will do. Uh, I've got uh, some blue, we, uh, I'll show you why I've, I'm, I've got the blue out here. I will not use the blue too much in the detailing, but to set up this, uh, your, uh, you know, your initial painting. Some white, and then just a few other colors. Now, uh, I've got Payne's Gray here, which is my favorite gray. I use that a lot. I use a lot of white, and then I use these other things. The other things are almost optional, though. I mean, this is a little bit of sap green. This is some Norwegian orange, uh, or just orange. And then this is a uh, yellow deep, so it's a strong yellow. But, you know, that's only because I like to infuse a little bit of color here and there, just a little bit of a blush, to give it some interest. Uh, you can or cannot do that, depending on how elaborate you want to get. And then I've got just a pan of water, because I'm using it. These are all acrylics. And uh, as far as brushes are concerned, uh, I am not a purist when it comes to brushes. One of my favorite brushes for an awful long time was, was a Crayola brush that I borrowed from the kids. Uh, but these are, uh, these are sable brushes here. This is a fan brush and a smaller brush for some details. You can pick these things up. Actually, they sell them at most of the hobby stores like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Uh, and you can buy a, a, a bag of the, the inexpensive ones for just a few bucks. So you can actually get this thing done uh, just on a shoestring. It won't cost you very much at all, even if you're not equipped, you know, already to, to, uh, to do painting. Accumulate this stuff. It's, it's really inexpensive. This is, once again, you can use just about anything. Now, this happens to be just a scrap of plywood that I had out in my workshop. As you can see, it's just a piece of plywood. You can use illustration board. You could use cardboard if you want to. You could use, uh, you know, you could, or you could use a, a, um, a piece of uh, canvas board on cardboard or stretched canvas, which are also readily available uh, fairly inexpensively at, uh, you know, like Hobby Lobby and Michaels and that sort of thing. Okay, now 
that. This is, uh, this is just painter's tape, you know, the blue painter's tape. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using it, and I'll show you how in just a minute. Now, to prepare this, what I've done, I have painted the background in blue. Uh, the, the example I showed you, you know, was in blue. Uh, and once again, suit yourself. Um, keep in mind that, the, that what we're going over it with is going to be basically variations on a white with a, a dark branching. So you don't want something that's going to hide those particular, uh, you know, colors. Blue works well. And I've done it in sort of a graduated tones, which in the art world they call that ombre. I have no, I have no, uh, you know, uh, I don't know why. It's, uh, I think it's because in the art world, in order to really sound like an artist, there are certain big words you need to use. It's like, um, oh, syncopation, juxtaposition, or this is my motif, if you will. You have to throw the if you will in there, and that makes you sound uh, smarter than you actually are. <laughs> anyway, this case, it's ombre. That means you go from dark to light, so you can, and you can vary that. It makes it a little bit more interesting and, uh, and a, a little bit more realistic, because that's kind of what sky is. Now, to get what these are going to be is these channels that I'm leaving open here, these are going to be the trunks of your, of your tree. And I have torn the tape right down the middle, and it gives you that kind of ragged edge. Well, that gives you a little bit of texture and some interesting shapes, and it makes it real fast and very controllable as to, you know, how you put it, uh, or how you put your paint on there. Okay, what I do is I just tear off strip that will cover it, and then just start ripping it right down the middle in a reasonably controlled way, and it'll sort of find its own way. So, okay. Now, just take this, select a, a, a strip where you want your next trunk to be. This will be one trunk. This will be another trunk. So we'll have another one, you know, somewhere along in here. So what I'll do is I'll just start this. And remember that the ragged edge is the, is the surface of your trunk. So just pick a spot put there. This other piece we will put finished here in the Put that right here. That, that'll be a little bit larger one. There we go. Oops. As you can see, that's what your trunk, that's kind of the configuration of what your trunk's going to look like. Okay? And then I'll just fill this in down here. That's it. Is that right? There we go. So now we've got, we've got three trunks. One, two, three. Uh, we'll jump off of here for just a minute. I'll complete uh, putting this stuff together here, because now, now that you've got your start, you can start doing that too, and when we come back, then we'll start putting some paint on there. So see you in just a minute. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> now, as you can see, I've completed putting the tape on here, and once again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just do a composition of however it is you want this thing to end up. These are all, all these exposed areas here, those are your tree trunks. Not this part over here, of course, you leave that alone. Now, I've also filled in this center piece because there was a white strip left when I put this down, and I, that's not necessary. I just didn't want that showing because I don't want you to do this and mistake that as a, as a tree trunk. So, remember, pay attention and only, we're only going to be painting in these exposed areas, creating the look of the, the tree trunks. <clears throat> now, this is another one of those things where you can get as elaborate or as simple as your, you know, as your particular uh, skill level or the time you want to spend on this dictates. What I'm going to paint this with is a whole lot of white. 
these are gonna, this is gonna be like a birch. You could paint uh, this in any kind of, uh, you know, uh, a tree. You could actually, we're not gonna put leaves in here, but you could. And uh, you'll see, you can get creative with this and, and go all over the place with it. Now I've got white, okay, titanium white. And I'm putting just a little bit of the Payne's gray out here because <clears throat> I don't want it to be absolutely white. I want it to be just a little bit off white because we're gonna put some highlights in it and that's gonna be white. That was a little bit of brown. Now, I'm gonna paint it with this, this is an artist brush, but you could use a foam brush, you could use those real cheap, you know, um, things that you get at the, at the home improvement store. Anything to get the paint on here, that's all you're worried about. So let's wet or moisten this a little bit. And we'll just mix up a little bit of this until we have just about the right kind of color that we want. And that's about it, okay? Now, if it streaks a little bit, that's okay too. So what we do, we just start putting the paint on there, just, you don't have, you got, you got your, uh, um, your tape to, you know, be your guide, so you don't have to, you don't have to be careful at all. You see, if you get a little variation in there, all the better. Okay, that one's done, or at least it's, be, it's begun. Okay, now, you just keep going along that, and, and as you're doing it, start thinking about the, the way the composition is, because as you saw in the example I showed you, um, we're going to have uh, branches and stuff come off of here, and so you want to, okay, this, like for me, this one's going to be in front, this one's going to be next, this one's going to be in the background, this one's going to be next, and then that's going to be in the background of this one. So I will plan the positioning of my branches accordingly so that they lay over one another in exactly the way I want them to. Now I know this doesn't look very, you know, very professionally artistic in, in technique, but it doesn't matter because once you start, uh, you know, putting your, your um, textures and your details on there, it, it, it actually looks a little better if it is a little bit, you know, haphazard like that. Well, I might mention I've got a couple of pieces here that are like uh, like branches that go off. As you can see, that's very simple. You just guide your paint over or your tape over, or you tear it off in that way, and then just take a little V of paint, I mean tape, and uh, stick it in there, and the result will be a uh, you know like a crotch in the in the paint in the uh, in the tree. Payne's gray is a very good, uh, very good gray. It's it's dark, but you can when you water it down, it, it's actually a transparent gray, and it's great for glazing in uh, shadows and that kind of stuff, you know. Or in this case, tempering the white just enough to so that uh, so that if we put white over top of this. <clears throat> That's what will that's what will create the uh, the highlights. Now, there are galleries that this is enough. <laughs> you could hang that, and they would consider it art. But we don't do that around here. Okay. Now, this is acrylic, and it dries very fast. Oil paint, or even uh, you know some of the house paints, if you might use some of that, takes a little while, and it would probably be a good idea at this point for you to go and get a cup of coffee or take a break, and uh, 
and let this stuff uh, dry. The acrylics don't, doesn't take very long at all. Some of the others do, but you, you, want, you want this base color and coloration here to be fairly dry before you start, uh, you know, mucking around with it with other details. So, we'll take a break. Now remember, we're going a light source from here, so if these are a little bit lighter than this, than this is, fine. Okay, we'll be back in just a little bit when this is dry and then we can continue.